Hello everyone, and welcome to Full Drone Gaming's third PS2 tutorial, and in this tutorial we're going to learn all about how to rip, burn, and play these backed up PlayStation 2 games on your PlayStation 2 without the need for a mod chip. But what, you're, what you are going to need is a memory card with free McBoot installed, and if you don't have one, you can, actually, you can follow our tutorial on the channel for how to install it if you have the materials, but if you don't, I guess really there's nothing you can do here. But for the people that do, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, you're going to need this memory card here with Freemic Boot, and you're also going to need a blank DVD. I'm not really sure if you can read the, the brand on here, but this is a Memorex DVD, and they're not really high quality media. I think I got around 100 DVDs for about 10 or $15 a couple months ago, and I'm still going through them. They're pretty good. They work, but they're not like really high quality. They might, you know, they're more prone to errors, I guess you could say. So I recommend going with verbatims, which are high quality media, which obviously will have fewer errors. And obviously you're going to need a PS2 game. And here I have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. You can use whatever you want. If you have a dual layer, layer DVD, you're going to need blank dual layer DVDs. And also, I'm actually I'm not sure if CD games work with this either. I know like, what, 10 maybe PS2 games were made with CDs. I just made that number up. I could be completely wrong. But for run-of-the-mill DVD games, this is the way to go. And also, I guess you could use this tutorial to play downloaded games from the internet, but who does that, right? Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and go over to the computer, and I will show you how to do, uh, work with all this stuff to play burn games on your PS2, or back up, backed up games, I guess. And uh, the only thing I have to say before we start is make sure you have a DVD burner on your, your computer, because you, I know who doesn't have one these days, right? But if you're, maybe you're using an older computer to do this, you might not have one and might not realize it. So before you start, make sure you have a DVD burner. But anyway, without further ado, let's go to the computer and finally start this tutorial. Alright guys, here we are over on the computer. And the first thing we're going to need to do is open up the internet and go to imageburn.com. You can use other programs, but this is the one I like to use for this kind of thing. And you're going to need to download from one of the mirrors the imageburn program, which is going to take the ISO file and create it... or create an ISO file from the image on the disk which we're going to need to burn to a disk later on so go ahead and do that but I've already downloaded it and installed it and just load it up and you'll get to this screen right here called the easy mode picker actually if it's not on the screen just go to mode easy mode picker and that'll be here and the thing you need to do or click is create image file from disk right here and it will go read the disk for you and here's the name of the disk, not really that important, and there's some information over here that's not really all that important either. But what I do is just leave it the same and click this button here. And what it's going to do is read the disk for you and create the image file. And I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch this, obviously, because it's going to take forever. But I will come back when it's almost done and show you what we need to do from there. Oh, and one more important thing is it's creating the file at this position right here. See, users, your username, documents, and then it's putting it in the documents folder. If it's not there, just look here and it'll tell you where it's at. And that's all you gotta do to find it. So I'll see you guys when this is done. Alright, ImageBurn has uh, finished ripping the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 disc, or image from the disc. And I just dragged it to my desktop here just to make it easier to see. And now there's one more thing that we need to get from the internet. What you wanna do is type in, uh, let's see, ESR Patcher. Now, it's on the PSX Scene forums. Just go ahead and click there. You can search the PSX scene forums if you want to. It's in the official ESR forums. Go down to the ESR public beta. And then at the very end of this post, go ahead and download the ESR Disk Patcher GUI. Just go ahead and click that. I've actually already downloaded it. So just go to your downloads folder and you'll have an RAR file in here. Let me just delete this. And delete this. Because that's what you will get in a second. But this is what you'll have in there, the .RAR file. And just go ahead and use 7-zip to extract it. And then you'll have this. So click on that, and then click on this, and then open the ESR Disk Patcher application. No, it is not a virus. Now, just have it open like this. Click Patch, and then go to Desktop, down to your ISO file here. And the patching process has finished successfully. So, now you don't need this anymore. This ISO has been patched, and if you saw, you could actually go to the downloads. Let's open it up again. You can unpatch the file just in case you ever needed to all right so let's get rid of all this man my mouse is going crazy today but anyway we have the patched iso file here what we need to do is go back to image burn nope not hypercam go back to image burn and click on write image file to disk and then up here in this corner click on the magnifying glass and folder icon go to your desktop and click on the slus 
you know, the ISO file from the game that you ripped, and then you should be fine. And But over here, the key is to lower the write speed down to something like 3 or 4. What I like to do is 4, and that will make, I guess you'll have fewer errors that way. You can leave verify on, but I don't really, I'll leave it on just for this, and actually you can just go ahead and leave it on. It doesn't really hurt anything, and it verifies, or tries to verify anyway, that there were no errors in the burning of the disk. But anyway, alright, so I'm going to go ahead and burn, start burning the ISO to the blank disk, the patched ISO, might I add. Alright, so while that's working, let me just explain something else. This ISO file right here you can actually use with PCSX2, the PlayStation 2 emulator. So maybe I'll make another tutorial on that one day. And I'm not sure if patched ISOs work on that, but good thing there's an unpatch option. If not, just go ahead and, if there wasn't, you would have to, uh, to rip the game again. But anyway, while this is ripping, actually while this is burning to the disk, I'm going to cut this out and... After it's done, actually, I'm not going to do it. I don't need a computer anymore. I will show you the what to do on the PS2 to be able to play it. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right, here we are over by the PS2 next to my classic old TV. And what we did do over here was we ripped the original PS2 disc, patched it, and then burned it to a blank DVD, which are both right here. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is open the PS2, put in the burned copy just to show you. I left the original disc right there just to show you I'm not pulling any switcheroos or anything and what you want to do is go down to ESR which is the fourth one on my list I'm not sure if it's like a really white screen it might be kind of hard to see but let's see if it'll adjust here yeah, it's kind of hard to see but anyway I'll come back up here but what's important about this is it will load the the game the burn disc that we put in there and if it's not on your list your free boot list you can actually just inst you can load it from you launch elf if you put the .l file on a flash drive, you can load it from a flash drive. But most people will have ESR on their Freemium Boot list. Now, it's kind of hard to see, like I said. I'll see if I can get down here lower. Yeah, I don't know. This old, these old TVs are kind of hard to work with. But the top left option, you can kind of see it's highlighted there. It says you are Launch C DVD. Just go ahead and click on Launch C DVD. And let's see what happens. Well... It's flashing some colors here. Purple, pink, blue. And look at that. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. But wait, isn't the disc right there? Yes, that is because we have officially loaded a backed up copy of the game. And there's one thing to notice about this game. Or not about this game, but some games actually don't load this way. And you have to play around with the options. They were, it was like... There are options in ESR that you have to play with, and I might cover that in either a later tutorial or I'll just put it in the description. Yeah, actually, that's what I'm going to do. I will give a little more information, since it's kind of hard to see the screen. I'll put a little more information on how to load finicky games in the description. So, as you can see, everything is working here. And it's just like playing the game for real. And so, all I have to say is thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Hopefully, I helped you guys out. I know it's kind of hard to see sometimes, like what I was trying to show you on the TV and stuff, but hopefully you guys were able to follow the tutorial and play your backed up games, and I will see you guys back for whatever PS2 tutorials I may create next.